Dragonlance is nothing if not consistent in its inconsistency. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about how Dragonlance has and is changing with Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition in its Dragonlance Shadows of the Dragon Queen release. I'd like to take a moment and thank the members of this channel and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate link. If I miss any salient points or you happen to disagree with mine, please leave a comment below. Since the release of DL1 Dragons of Despair for Advanced Dungeons & Dragons by Tracy Hickman in March of 1984, and the novel Dragons of Autumn Twilight by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman in November of 1984, we've believed we know what Dragonlance as a campaign setting is. As the modules continued to be released, the first source book, DL5 Dragons of Mystery, by Michael Dobson in December 1984 would flesh out and reinforce the campaign world that had been released piecemeal till now. We had the story of Huma and the defeat of the Queen of Darkness in ancient history. This created a wonderful backstory and added depth to the world of Kryn, but all that changed when Richard A. Knack wrote The Legend of Huma in 1988. Lord Soth's story would even change from the early Legends and Chronicles versions to the release of Edo Van Belkham's Lord Soth from the Warriors series in 1996. Raceland Majir's own test of high sorcery and his introduction to his first wizard school changed from the original versions written by Margaret Weiss in Dragon Magazine number 83 from March 1984 with Test of the Twins to Terry Phillips's The Soul Forge Advanced Dungeons & Dragons gamebook released in September 1985, all the way to Margaret Weiss's The Soul Forge released in 1998. But it's not just the lore that seems to have been in constant flux throughout the ages the game world itself changed. Upon completion of the Dragonlance game products in 1987 with the release of Dragonlance Adventures by Tracy Hickman and Margaret Weiss, The Atlas of the Dragonlance World by Karen Wynne Fonstadt, The Art of the Dragonlance Saga, edited by Mary Kirchhoff, and Leaves from the Inn of the Last Home, edited by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, fans were sure that they knew the entirety of this war-torn world of Kryn. But the popularity in the novels continued, and TSR saw diminished returns in Advanced Dungeons & Dragons game products. They thought it was time to switch it up. In 1989, they released Time of the Dragon, an Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd edition box set by David Zeb Cook. This saw the creation of a whole new continent on Kryn and the seeming abandonment of Ancelon, the continent Dragonlance had been set on till now. TSR pushed this new Dragonlance flavor with its computer games with Dark Queen of Kryn by SSI and its DC Comics series with the adventures of Reva Silvercrown and Talidas. They all but abandoned Ancelon, turning many Dragonlance fans away from their familiar stomping grounds to a new unfamiliar setting which they largely ignored. When TSR realized their mistake, they attempted a course correction with the release of Tales of the Lance box set in June of 1992. But that just highlighted the misunderstanding of the setting and even the constant accrual of minor canon changes throughout, from the origin of some races to how and when certain events occurred. If you were a Dragonlance superfan in 1992, you noticed massive schisms between the fanbase, which up until then was unheard of. But the changes made to Dragonlance from Advanced Dungeons & Dragons to Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition paled in comparison to TSR's last-ditch effort to squeeze money out of this dying franchise with the Saga System and Dragonlance 5th Age Dramatic Adventure Game by William W. Connors, Sue Wineland Cook, and others in August of 1996. Yes, Dragonlance jumped game systems. Gone were dice, hit points, and levels, but it also moved the timeline in Dragonlance from the Age of Despair to the Age of Mortals. Magic changed with the absence of the gods. Everything about Dragonlance had changed from the timeline to the mechanics to the world itself. There was no worse time for Dragonlance than during the Saga days. The authors and the game company were at odds throughout its history, and that only continues till today. It wasn't just the game's system and the world updates throughout the systems, but the player options continued to change in order to highlight the different systems as well, and none of that was more apparent than in Dungeons & Dragons 3rd Edition. 
The Dragonlance campaign setting by Margaret Weiss and Don Perrin with Jamie Chambers and Christopher Coyle was released in August 2003 and attempted to course correct all of the disparate histories and game world details that had gone wild between the novels and the myriad of game system products. It is widely believed that the source books released by Margaret Weiss Productions slash Sovereign Press were the now de facto complete campaign source book materials. They took nearly everything from the novels and source materials that preceded it and distilled it into this new version of a Dungeons & Dragons game system. It opened up player options previously unheard of. You could play draconians and goblins, wizards and sorcerers, travel back to the Age of Might or forward to alternate timelines. It was truly groundbreaking, but with the inclusion of the original author's participation, the fan base was finally satiated, and never was there a fan base split again. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, with Dungeons & Dragons 4th Edition released in June 2008, Dragonlance was conspicuously absent. They had brought out new campaign worlds, but the diehard Dragonlance fans hadn't seen any love from the now IP owner, Wizards of the Coast, since the 5th Age game products. Sure, we homebrewed our own rules, but there was nothing quite like official game products released in the current game edition to build on the established fan base. This edition lasted a while, but it didn't connect with many of the Dungeons & Dragons players, so Wizards of the Coast released Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition in 2014. Now, here was a system that felt closer to old-school Dungeons & Dragons with the more modern sensibility. So, when would they release a Dragonlands campaign book? Well, after Ravenloft and Spelljammer, fans began to worry. Not that they wouldn't release one, but that they would. And in early 2022, Wizards of the Coast announced Dragonlance Shadow of the Dragon Queen to build on the hype and attention with the release of Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman's first novel in the Dragonlance Destinies trilogy, Dragons of Deceit. But the unearthed arcana game materials riled up the fan base. Wizards of the Coast is trying to make universal game mechanics across all of its multiverse settings, but this is anathema to the Dragonlance setting itself. Or is it? It is in stark contrast to the advanced Dungeons & Dragons version of Dragonlance, yes, but since then, Dragonlance has done nothing but change and evolve away from its origins. Not just in the game system, but timeline and options. This is just another iteration and change of a long history of changes. We can hold our breath and stomp our feet until we're blue in the face, but is Lord Soth commanding the Dark Queen's forces really more shocking than the Fifth Age was? Is it really the end of Dragonlance, clickbaity YouTube creators feign it to be? Can it even be called Dragonlance if it's not your version of Dragonlance, whatever version that may be? The sad truth is, is that we want nostalgia over anything even when the system can't support it. But the truth is, we have that nostalgia. The Chronicles and Legends are there waiting to be reread. The game system version of Dragonlance you loved best is still there and will always be there for you to roll up a character and play in. You don't have to buy or play the newest changed version of Dragonlance if you don't want to. But I'm going to. I've played every version of Dragonlance, from tabletop role-playing games to game books, video games, board games, and even Dragonlance stories in unsupported game systems. My passion for this amazing fantasy world is not diminished by its change, because I can always return to my favorite version whenever I want to. And so can you. And that is all I have to say on the uncomfortable truth about Dragonlance's changes. What do you think of the coming campaign source book, adventure, and board game? What's your favorite game system and era to play Dragonlance in? And finally, are we capable as a fan base in evolving with Dragonlance? Leave a comment below. I'd like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, Dragonlance is a story of love and friendship set against a backdrop of war.